Hi, my name is Peter Rich. I am a professor of instructional psychology and technology at Brigham Young University, where I teach courses in instructional design and elementary coding, as I prepare elementary coding teachers to teach coding in the classroom. I work with Boot Up as an external evaluator to look at the effectiveness of their programs. So what I would like to do is review some of the data that we've collected from this past year to look at the change and the effect that the uh, Boot Up professional development had on CPS teachers over this past year. So when we look at the data here, uh, it always helps to start by understanding who our teachers are. Uh, they're is a survey that was given at the beginning of the year and then at the end of the last training. Uh, on that initial survey, I had 89 teachers respond to that survey. And on the post survey, we had about 38 teachers respond to that survey. You can see they, um, on average, are about mid-career uh, teachers when you average their uh, number of years teaching. One thing that sticks out to me as I look at these numbers is that uh, they had a significant uh, number of years of coding experience uh, because teaching coding in the elementary classroom is pretty recent. I don't usually see these numbers much above a two. So the fact that at the beginning of the year the teachers were uh, over four years on average teaching experience and teaching coding and uh, a little below four years at the end of the year, that means that some of the teachers with maybe a little bit more experience teaching coding uh, didn't complete the survey at the end of the year. Uh, but still, as we see this, you're looking at over three and a half years experience teaching coding. Uh, and that may play into some of the things that we see as we look at the data. A little bit more about who our teachers are in terms of their racial uh, makeup. You can see that the majority uh, were white, um, and we had a fair number that were black or African American. And then uh, just uh, one Asian and Polynesian and uh, others uh, that indicated that they were something other than those races. Uh, eight of these teachers did indicate that they were Hispanic as well. Uh, and finally, in terms of looking at the teacher demographics, I like to look at their role in the classroom. The vast majority of the teachers uh, that responded to this survey were uh, generalists. That means that they uh, teach all subjects, uh, which is common with most elementary teachers. So I call those classroom teachers. You also see that we've got about 14 teachers who completed this survey who um, are specialists. We've got technology or computing teachers, STEM or STEAM teachers, and media specialists or lab teachers as we look at these. So that kind of gives you an idea of what our uh, group looks like overall. When we look at why they participated in Boot Up, we see that the majority of these teachers actually uh, sought it out, or not sought it out, I apologize. The majority of these teachers had heard about it and asked if they could participate. Uh, so that is, this is a willing group as we look at this group. Uh, again, that plays into a little bit of the numbers that we're going to look at uh, as we look, go ahead. So let's start with this idea. What was their experience like in learning to code? I like to uh, hear from the teachers to start off with. So you've got one teacher here who says, my special education students had an opportunity to interact with technology in a way they'd never tried before. It helped some of my students stay focused, providing instant gratification and feeling success, and provided one of my students with muscular dystrophy an opportunity to participate fully in music class for the first time. So it's always exciting when I see teachers talk about students who otherwise aren't able to participate uh, now being able to participate. So uh, learning to code and teaching coding provided this teacher and student at least with the opportunity to participate in new ways. You also see uh, I saw a lot of comments about microbits and bbots when I was looking at teachers' feedback. And so this kind of exemplifies what one of the teachers, uh, what a lot of the teachers were saying, where we hear this teacher say, my students love the microbits and bbots. It has been a hit, and I'm looking forward to more lessons and helping teachers with them. So it kind of gives you a feel for overall uh, teacher's experience. Digging into that more with all of the teachers, I asked what it was like, uh, what their confidence was like to teach coding both before and after boot up. And you can see here we've got um, the same teachers on the left as the one on the right. So for example, we've got this very first teacher says, before boot up, their confidence to teach coding, it was non-existent. Uh, and after boot up, they love it. Uh, they had no idea what it entailed and now they have some knowledge. You'll notice I kind of grouped the comments as we look at all of these teacher comments into different types of groups. Everybody on this page kind of went from a state of ignorance where they didn't know about coding to now they're confident and excited for it. Um, and we see that across the board as we look at a lot of these teachers. 
Uh, there's another group that indicated that they were kind of scared uh, to code to begin with. And those teachers all moved to a place of confidence at, or being positive about coding. So for example, you've got a teacher just simply saying, I was intimidated, but now they really enjoy coding, uh, the introducing their students to coding. I'm not comfortable to, I enjoyed it very much, and the results and the energy that the students have. A little apprehensive to more positive, uh, minimal engagement and hands-off approach to this was really rewarding. So you can see here the progress of teachers from beginning to the end of the year uh, for about the 40 teachers who responded to the end of the year survey. Uh, more in the scared to confident group, you can see here lots of teachers indicated they were kind of scared to begin with, hesitant, intimidating, fearful, you see all of these words that they're using to now uh, confident, engaged, delightful, ready to go, comfortable and excited. So uh, no matter what we see from here on out, uh, qualitatively, I see the teachers being very excited. Now, one thing I did mention at the beginning is there were a lot of teachers already had a couple of years experience teaching coding. And so there was actually a fair number of teachers in this group who indicated at the beginning that they already were excited and confident and competent to teach coding. So for example, you have this first teacher here says, I love to teach coding and now they feel the same. I was excited, I'm still excited, and I'm more confident. I love being creative with CS, and they say their feelings are the same. Extremely excited uh, to more confident. Loved it to loved even more, loving improvements to still loving improvements uh, that, that are being made as they participate in these uh, boot up activities. So overall, you see teachers, whether they're moving from a state of ignorance or anxiety uh, or already a state of excitement to ending up in the same or better place than where they began as we look across all of those teachers and we hear from their voices. So one of the things that I wanted to find out is how often they teach coding and uh, here you've got uh, teacher's responses uh, from rarely, seldom, a little, regularly, part-time, or full-time. When they say a little, a little means once a month. Regularly is once a week. Part-time is two to three times a week, and full-time is every day. So the majority of teachers um, are teaching at least monthly. Uh, you do have a, at least 20 of these teachers, so half of these teachers that responded that are teaching weekly. That weekly group is probably where you see the greatest uh, growth and change. Um, from the pre to post in terms of their confidence to teach coding. So this is always positive in terms of looking at everything kind of here on the right hand side of this graph. Uh, you want to see that move more to the right. I would say as long as teachers are teaching coding weekly, you'll see a lot of growth in the teachers and in the students, understanding how they can incorporate coding into the things that they do. So uh, as we look at another uh, bit of what teachers did this year, we ask how often they integrated coding with other subjects. I look at this in two different ways. One is the mean, which is the average that we often think of as the average, where you uh, add up everybody's scores and divide it by the number of total people. And you can see here when we look at that, uh, language arts and math, um, you know, over three and a half lessons that are integrated across the year, and you have a social science and science lessons as well as some other types of subjects that teachers are integrating coding with, which is great. I also like to look at the median on this. The median gives me a better idea of um, what all teachers are doing. It's um, because sometimes uh, you've got specialists who teach full time. They do a lot of integration, which is awesome. Um, they tend to pull up those mean numbers when we look at the mean. So the median kind of treats everybody the same and weighs their uh, contribution to this the same. And you can see here, even at the median, on average, you're seeing seven uh, different integrated lessons that happened over the 2023-24 school year per teacher who responded to this survey. Um, three of those are in language arts, three of those are math. That's where we see most of the integration happening. One of those was in science. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea integration is happening and where it's happening uh, with coding in elementary school and CPS. This is an interesting question. We look at how well supported the CPS teachers feel um, by different players in their community. Typically, as I look at this, I'm looking for numbers above a seven uh, as, as being uh, healthy support, right? So uh, far and away, teachers feel the most supported by boot up. That's above an eight, and that's great. Uh, but most other indicators here are above the seven. So uh, teachers are feeling supported by their instructional coaches, their principal, the district, and students' families, uh, which are all important. A, a curious uh, indicator here is the other teachers at your school is a bit lower than the others. Um, this is important 
both for teachers that are specialists who might feel like uh, the classroom teachers are kind of dropping the kids off and not supporting them uh, in teaching the coding, or uh, as well as uh, generalists who are in the classroom and might feel like they're not getting the support that they need from their colleagues. So this isn't a terrible number, but it's also not above that seven point that <clears throat> I like to look at to see how well supported teachers feel. So this might be an area to examine going forward and make sure that the camaraderie and the uh, peer sharing is happening uh, amongst the teachers. So they feel supported in that community that is closest to them uh, with all these different players around them. So we also asked teachers what their greatest successes and challenges were as they uh, taught coding in the classroom. Those are open-ended responses, just like you saw with the before and after things. I went ahead and classified those into different groups of uh, categories for uh, what the success was. You can see that the most common success that teachers indicated they had was student interest in coding. This is where teachers talk about students being excited with coding, uh, wanting to code, um, asking if they can code. That was far and away the most common success that teachers mentioned. But it's also worth noting that the second most common success that they mentioned specifically had to do with physical computing. So this is where teachers talked about using the B-Bots in the classroom or using the microbits. And so that was very popular in CPS. A lot of teachers were really excited with how those work out in the classroom. So I think that's definitely something that you would want to uh, continue to do as you move forward. Excuse me. Um, you can also see there's some other successes, students collaborating, students building their own skill and ability level, and student problem solving as you look across that. So lots of great successes. Um, you can see here a quote that sort of uh, typifies the type of student interest quote that I saw from teachers is this teacher saying, students working through challenges, overcoming obstacles, the excitement students have when they get to the next level. I do like that code.org has multiple languages as well. So lots of different successes in there when they talk about students' excitement uh, as they're uh, being able to advance in their coding ability. So the other side of successes is also asking what's the challenge? And uh, this there were a lot there was a lot greater variety of challenges than there were of successes. And so um, when I look at the top five challenges here, you see that the numbers are a bit lower than you see with successes. And that's because there's a lot of uh, challenges that were individual to one or two teachers that only one, two, or three teachers commented on. But the challenge that was the most common that I saw uh, over a dozen teachers uh, was time. And that's a typical challenge you see here uh, as this teacher mentioned time. I need more time to teach it in my class when we only do it once a week. So that is something that a lot of teachers uh, indicated that was their biggest challenge is just finding the time to teach coding in the classroom. And so uh, schools where that is baked into their time and there's an expectation and the resources and structure in place to allow teachers to teach is uh, one of the ways of overcoming that challenge. So student interest, great success, time, biggest challenge. So we also uh, asked teachers about 30 different questions about their beliefs about teaching coding and the pre-survey and the post-survey. This is on a one to six scale, uh, Likert type scale, where we present teachers with questions and they agree or disagree uh, with those questions. A one is strongly disagree and a six is strongly agree. And you see kind of the range that we have where a two is disagree, a three is somewhat disagree, and then a four is somewhat agree and a five is agree. So questions to deal the, that deal with the value uh, of teaching coding are questions like, all kids should learn how to code. I believe children can learn how to code. I would think they'll need coding for their future careers. Those are the types of questions that uh, make up this value uh, construct here. You can see teachers already started off agreeing about the importance of coding to begin with, which was awesome. And they actually grew uh, statistically, even though it was a, kind of sort of a medium effect size, as we look at this across the board, uh, they did grow in their uh, beliefs to teach coding, um, their value beliefs. So that's fantastic. Uh, teachers also started off at a 4.6, which was sort of halfway between somewhat agree and agree on their own computational thinking abilities. And so this is their self-efficacy for things like, I can find patterns in data, I can break down large problems into smaller problems. Uh, things that have to do with thinking computationally sans the coding. Uh, 
Some teachers started off there halfway between somewhat agree and agree, and they ended up nearly at agree with those comments, uh, those statements. So you can see teachers are growing in their uh, personal growth to uh, think computationally, or at least their confidence uh, for that as we look across the board there. So um, also where we see their greatest growth is what teachers cutting. Uh, they started off on the negative side uh, about a, these of these statements about their ability to code. So teachers were more likely to somewhat disagree with statements that they know how to code. Uh, things like, I know what a variable is and when I can use it, I can use loops, I can talk about the different types of conditionals. Uh, so those are the things that they were disagreeing to begin with, or somewhat disagreeing. But you can see now they flipped that script and they're halfway between somewhat agree and agree. So this is really good growth as we look at that overall with the teachers. And then we also see great growth over here on their teaching confidence. Their confidence or their self-efficacy to teach coding in the classroom. They started off a little bit higher there, almost at the somewhat agree, not quite there. Uh, to begin with that they could teach coding in the classroom again This makes sense because they do have a few years teaching coding But they really weren't highly confident with that to begin with even though they were starting on the positive side of this scale The good news is they're solidly on the positive side now So they went from a almost somewhat agree that I can teach coding I know where to find resources to teach coding I can help students debug their programs to a solidly agree that I can do those things above a five now. So this is really good growth overall. Um, if you are participating and you watched me look at uh, present these scores from last year, they are a little bit lower than last year's scores, but um, I did some analysis to see if the change was lower and the change is greater, uh, or I'm sorry, it's the same statistically as it was last year. So last year, uh, some teachers actually started off higher on their beginning scores and ended off a little bit higher the growth between the scores is pretty much the same as it was last year to this year um, between each of these constructs. And that's because uh, teachers start off lower this year, but they still ended up growing just as much. So overall, really good growth, uh, significant growth across the board. Um, we also see just a few simple questions here on a 1 to 10 scale where we asked a teacher, what is their confidence to teach coding? You can see their confidence went from below a 5 on a 10-point scale to above an 8, which is phenomenal, right? So teacher's confidence pretty much doubled uh, in their ability to teach coding. They were already excited to teach coding to begin with. They were above an 8, which is, again, anything above an 8 is really good. Um, and they ended nearly at a nine as, as we look at that. So they climbed half a point there, uh, which is great. Uh, they were already excited. Now they're even more excited. And on the flip side of that, their anxiety wasn't super high to begin with, but it's even lower now. So those are all good indicators, uh, especially the confidence indicator. The teachers are overall feeling more confident uh, about coding. So um, as we look at uh, one other aspect of this evaluation, we wanted to find out well, what was teachers' experience with the boot-up trainings. And if we look at that, we can see here uh, on a five-point scale how satisfied they were with boot-up. Teachers rated this at a 4.8, which is really good, especially over almost 40 teachers. So uh, teachers highly um, enjoyed this experience. As you look at this this year, they felt like their students uh, enjoyed the experience, rated that at a 4.6, and that the majority of their students belong in CS. So these are all really good ratings as we look at this across the board, and the fact that teachers are likely to recommend boot up to a peer at a 9.5 out of 10. Um, so overall, teachers really look like they enjoyed their boot up experience. As we look at how they participated in that, um, you can see that on average teachers reported attending about three boot up trainings uh, in person and uh, about four and a half trainings online across the teachers. So more online trainings that teachers were attending than in person trainings. So we asked them what was their preference. Um, seven said online, nine said in person, but the vast majority in this case actually indicated that they liked them the same. And when I categorized why they liked them, uh, the online only people said for convenience's sake. It's just easier to focus for them. It's nice to be able to do it from home. Uh, In-person people, they emphasize the peer interaction and the hands-on uh, nature of the in-person experience that they really enjoyed. Overall though, most teachers indicated that both of those modalities were engaging. So that's it uh, that I have for the CPS data for 2023-24. Overall, you can see that teachers enjoyed coding. Uh, they really enjoyed the physical aspects of coding with the B-bots and the micro bits. 
they felt like their students were engaged and uh, most importantly teachers confidence to teach coding has grown uh, from a negative or very slightly positive uh, area to a solidly positive confidence that they can teach coding at this point. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can do that through boot up uh, or contact me directly if you have any questions at peter underscore rich at byu.edu. Thank you.